So the Whale Time Project's aim is to involve, engage, and educate the public about whales and the marine environment. And so it also promotes the ethical and sustainable tourism centered around this iconic species. So essentially, the Whale Time Project has four main elements. The first being research, citizen science, public awareness, and finally, community engagement. So as many of you know, um, Whale Time is a really special time on the east coast of South Africa when we're lucky enough to observe some of these species that frequent the KZN waters. In particular, the humpback whale, which we, which this one, which we named Lady. So humpback whales migrate in June and July from the Antarctic feeding grounds um, northwards to carve and, and um, breed in the tropical waters. And then again in October, November, southwards back down to the Antarctic feeding grounds. And um, they migrate quite close to the coastline. And in the past, this made them really easy whaling targets. So um, the history of whaling in South Africa has been uh, covered quite extensively during the conference and the workshop, so I won't go into too much detail. But um, in the 1900s, when whaling methods were, well, modern whaling methods were introduced, humpback whale populations declined dramatically. And after the 1960, I think it's 1963, humpback whale ban and other local and global interventions, this population really made a remarkable recovery. And like King said, I think it was estimated that after the whaling era, it went from a mere 340 individuals to over 15,000 today that passed through the KZN waters. So again, like Ken said, we have seven breeding populations south of the equator, and we're particularly interested in the sea stock, which is found in the south southwest Indian Ocean. Um, the sea stock is then subdivided into four different populations, subpopulations, and we're particularly interested in the C1 stock that passed through the KZN waters. So the degree of, um, of their demographic independence remains quite unclear, and so it's really important to understand the relationship between these subpopulations for effective conservation and management. So like Tori mentioned quite de in detail, um, humpback whales have unique individual pigmentation on the underside of their fluke tails. And these can be scored on a range of one to five um, according to the color. So from one being mostly white to five being mostly dark. And these can be then used for photo identification catalog and make matches like Tori mentioned. And so we don't have one yet, but there's a really desperate need for us to get this kind of information of the Southwest Indian Ocean um, population. Um, and we believe that this should be a joint collaboration between government, researchers, conservationists, and society. So by understanding and creating this kind of catalog, we can then start understanding the movement dynamics and the population ecology of the humpback whale um, populations that come through the KZN waters and the extent of mixing between subpopulations. So with that in mind, um, we've, we've started the Citizen Science Project, um, again, very similarly to Tori and Happy Whale, and the aim is to update the scientific knowledge using citizens as citizen scientists and allowing them to contribute their photographs to help us um, create South Africa's first photo identification catalog for our whales. And this is really important, again, to look at the, um, the research opportunity that this can have. So um, along with our public awareness campaign of Citizen Science Project, we have a Citizen Science brochure that we are currently distributing to a lot of, and hoping to distribute to some of the operators um, here. I actually have a couple of these brochures with me. And basically it just gives the public a really easy step-by-step -step, um, way to upload and submit their photographs online. We also promote our social media pages and um, we encourage the public to remember the um, whale watching code of conduct. So we also have a really strong online social media presence and through this we hope to um, generate movement with the Citizen Science Project as well as build on existing knowledge and get really strong um, really strong advocates for ocean conservation. And like Ken mentioned yesterday, we want to help generate this paradigm shift of the public and their attitudes towards conservation. And by using powerful um, images and messages about the whale and using the whales as ocean ambassadors, we can hope um, to help them change their, and make better informed decisions. So on our website, we also have really detailed information about the different species that we see um, in the KZM waters as well as the different behaviors that they, you can observe while whale watching. Um, we also have important information about the marine code of conduct and responsible boat-based whale watching, as well as important information on reporting strandings and beached whales. 
And then a little bit of history about the, um, the whaling in Durban. So one of our most successful aims is the, um, the joint effort that we have with the KZN Coastal College. And this is to promote sustainable and responsible tourism. So we currently have 10 tour guides in training that are at the back there, and they, they've joined us for this conference. And basically, we are training them to become responsible ecotourism whale town guides. And they currently give land-based uh, guides at the museum, the Port and Soul Maritime Museum. And we hope to get them to function as independent guides um, that appreciate uh, whales and their habitat, and then take this message back to their uh, coastal communities. And then finally, in terms of public awareness, we really want to put the East Coast whale migration on the map as this global phenomenon. And so being involved in initiatives like the Welcoming the Whale Festival and the recent Sodova Whale Route launch, we hope to put this, this phenomenon on the map and we want everyone to know that Lady and her family are here and coming. And then lastly, the Humpback whale population has recovered from, um, from numbers that were arguably close to extinction. And so this is a really, this is a conservation success story and it shows that conservation clearly can and does work. And so we want the whales to be a symbol of health and a continuation of, um, of the health in the oceans and the animals that frequent it.